I'm going to show you how to make a pattern that doesn't seem like it's a repeating or symmetric pattern. Um, if you look closely enough, you can tell that this is a tiled pattern. You can see um, it's at an angle here. It's about, I think, 15 degrees. And um, anyway, this is useful if you're trying to help the viewer of the figure uh, decipher what's what without having to tie everything to the text. It just helps um, look at everything at a glance. So I'm going to zoom in to about the scale that we want to fill it. We can always scale the pattern afterward because these are vectors after all. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is create one of these circular nodes. Um, they're just oblong circles. And um, I want to make sure snap is on. I have my grid on, which is uh, shift 3, which is the pound key. And I'm snapping to the grid, and I'm snapping to nodes. And that way, when I hover over an intersection of my grid, uh, this crosshair comes up. So to create a, a circle, I'm going to click and hold and drag. So this does not appear like the icon. Uh, that's probably because the last time I drew a circle, I created a semicircle like this, and my fill was set up to just show an outline. So what we, what we can do is um, hit the fill options, control shift F, and fill this and then remove the strokes. So that looks more like a, a semicircle, but it's still not a full full node like these are shown over here. So to, to complete this circle, we want to drag the nodes. That's F2. And these are our nodes here. Um, so you can try to like autom you can try to manually line this up, uh, but as you can see. There's a flat, there's a flat face there, so it may look like a circle. And for the pattern, it's probably good enough, but it's not actually a circle. Um, you got to be careful. You can actually like drag that in. Um, so if you have the mouse on the outside of the circle, it becomes more of like a pie chart type shape. And this, when you have the mouse on the inside of the circle, it's a flat edge. So um, <clears throat> what we want to do is to make sure these two nodes line up. The one way to do it is to hold control and let's just drag that over to 90 degrees and then we'll do the same thing with this node, drag it over to 90 degrees and release and then that way it's a full circle, uh, well, an oval. So to make this a circle, you can you can change the parameters up here. So it, if we want it 3 by 3, uh, that makes it a circle. And say we want to center it somewhere, we'll snap with uh, center. So as long as you drag from near the center, it'll snap to the center. And then um, let's make this a little smaller here. Okay. So these nodes are actually um, a little bit oblong, so we want to turn snap off. Alright, so that's a good scale. And then we'll start creating some of these fibers. And I'm, I'm using this, uh, let's draw something in the background here. So I'm using this cube and change the fill color and move to the back with the end key. And now I'm going to create these uh, curvy fibers here. And the way I created these was actually just using the, the freehand tool over here. And I had smoothing up to about 50% or something. You can play around with this, but basically the higher the number, the more smooth it become, the line becomes. And um, so we'll just, we'll just give this a shot and see how it looks. And if we want to start by snapping from the center of this uh, oval, we need to make sure that uh, our snap is on, but also we're snapping to the center of the object. And I think to get this to show up, you have to have this selected, the node snap. Okay, so we'll just start drawing here. And I'm going to stop at the edge of our, of our reference. So that's really thick. We'll just go to stroke, stroke style and reduce it to about 0.5. See how that looks. Looks fine. So now we'll draw another one of these lines. And I'm just drawing them randomly right now. Okay, and we'll draw one from this elbow here to snap to the elbow and snap to the path. And there it is. Um, so I'll just draw that like that. 
and then maybe we'll add a thicker line in there. I'm um, also freehand f6, and we can we can create another node over here. Point seven five. Okay, and then I'm just going to copy this. Um, all right, I'll make a new node. Make it black <coughs> and drag it over. Okay. So now, if we were to pattern this, um, obviously these lines are not going to line up. So uh, we need to just move this into an empty space. All right, over here. And we'll get rid of this reference. Uh, so we want to clone this and tile it. Uh, so what we're going to do is group it first. So select all these lines and then say Control G to group them. And then we can clone them by saying Edit Clone create tiled clones and we want this to be uh, a symmetry type of clone three by three and this way there if we rearrange these ta um, these tiles they can all surround this node the group of nodes that we're working from <clears throat> okay so to, to rearrange everything um, it's a good idea to instead of you could definitely just drag drag these over um, if you select three and then drag them with it the, like holding the control key it will it'll stay vertical or horizontal here or it'll move only vertical so uh, that's one thing you can do or you can translate knowing the width that you want to translate so if we check the width of this group here uh, it's 5.5 .5 pixels approximately wide so if we move this over 15 pixels by translating control shift M we want to move it horizontal, negative 15 pixels, apply, it'll move it over there. And then likewise with these guys, uh, we can check the, the height of our group. It's also about 5, um, so we'll move this up uh, 15 pixels. Okay, and that overshot, so we can see our group is actually less than than five even though it says the height is 5.2 pixels the the group um, is beyond that bottom node so since we want to make a seamless pattern um, these clones will really help us out because all the surrounding tiles will change when we change the original group so currently uh, there's actually a clone on top of the original group so this is actually a clone of group 5, so just delete that guy, and then there's still something down there, which is actually the group. So we're in layer 1 right now. To modify the contents of this group, just double-click it, and now we're not in the layer anymore. We're in the group, whatever it happens to be called. So we can select the individual uh, paths. So the method I use is I just drag and drop until um, everything lines up you're gonna have to add a few lines most likely um, and you can you can go you can make it non-cubic if you please like I could just drag this oops, I could drag this guy um, I could drag this guy or is it this one over and have this line move so if I do this they're all gonna move like that so that's definitely an option but it's probably a good idea It'll make it less confusing if you keep it as cubic as possible. So, um, all right. So let's just. I'm just going to move things around so that we get things to match up. So it looks like we need a fiber coming off of this node to join with this guy. So I'm just going to. This was a 0.75 pixel wide path, and I'm just going to draw another freehand path here, F6, and then I want to snap on and it should snap here. Alright, and then it's going to go right there. Okay, make that 0.75. Alright, stroke style. 0.75 pixels wide. And so this node can be modified so that the endpoint 
Um, so this circle is like is the uh, the orientation, and the actual diamond is the placement. So we'll just orient it such that it's perpendicular here. Okay, turn path snapping off. And there we go. That looks pretty good. And then um, we'll also do the same thing down here. Okay, well, <laughs> this looks good up here, so we'll just have to translate these these tiles accordingly. Um, so we do still have this guy open-ended, and to fix that, I'm actually just going to move it up here. Uh, so you can move this down, you can move whichever one you prefer. Okay, so this is going to be seamless because all f all four of these tiles match up. So as long as we create our offsets properly in the pattern, um, these other guys are gonna are gonna line up. It's just because of the way we translated everything that it doesn't look perfect. So we'll see in a second here. Um, if I if I get rid of these clones, I'm gonna delete them. I can now create a pattern with this. Um, so actually, you want to make sure it's not in a group anymore. So Control Shift G ungroups it. Now they're all individual paths. And what we can do is just say Alt to I, and that creates a pattern. To find the pattern name, it's over here in the fill and shrug properties, and that's it in the code. So what we can do is we'll apply that pattern to this this object here. Okay, so there it is. It does not look like it did when we cloned it, but if we go into the XML code, Control-Shift-X, we can watch, we can change the translation on that pattern. So I'll just rename it here. Um, this is going to be... Okay, random fibers, set that. And here's our translation. Um, so this translate, these values don't mean anything. This is just the original placement of the, the first tile in the pattern. So we can make these zero, zero for simplicity. Um, what really matters are the width and height of our, of our tile. So if we change the height, um, we're just guessing and checking here to 4.8, control enter to apply. Uh, we can see that helped quite a bit. And the same thing with the width, maybe 5.0 bring it together, so we need to bring it together a little bit more. Let's try 4.8 as well. And that looks pretty good. So now, if we want, we can scale this. This didn't hold. So zero. And then control enter will, it does shift it, but the pattern looks nearly the same. Um, so we can also add a scale if we want. Uh, it's the X and the Y scale. So I make it smaller and I'm going to rotate it, say 30 degrees. Uh, you can rotate it as well. So that's how you would create a seamless pattern. And you can see there's a little bit of white there actually. So let's just make this 4.75. Point seven. Okay. Nope. There's the height that I needed to change. Okay. So that looks really seamless. Um, so the only problem with a pattern this complicated is that um, the rendering, when you zoom in and out, it's it's fine here. But if you applied it to more shapes, the rendering is going to be slower. And 
Um, there is, so if we had that object, wherever it was, the one I just deleted, um, you could you could view uh, the display mode as outlined, and that makes everything a little simpler. But the problem is patterns are just completely removed. Um, however, the original group of paths like from which we created that pattern would have shown up as an outline. So um, the rendering is going to be quicker this way, but um, just try to apply those patterns to the smaller of your shapes if possible. Um, and that's it.